imagine that you have a 1x1x2 one by one by box. Choose one of the vertices and label this point P. Now suppose that there is an ant standing at P. Which point on the surface of the box will the ant need to travel the longest distance to reach? Notice that I'm not only asking which point is the greatest distance from P, but also placing the restriction that the ant can only travel along the surface of the box. If you're like me, your first guess might be that it's the vertex which lies exactly opposite from P. And this is not a bad guess, as this point is the greatest distance from P. But, perhaps surprisingly, for an ant walking on the surface of the box, this is not the furthest point. Let's start by finding the distance to the point opposite of P, which I will call Q. Since we are only concerned with the surface of the box, it would make sense to think about this problem two-dimensionally. Of course, the box is three-dimensional, so we'll need to project it into two dimensions. Imagine using scissors to cut along the seams of the box so that it collapses into a 2D surface, as shown in the animation. Now it's much easier to reason about the distance from P to Q. But also notice that this is not the only way we could have unwrapped the box. The squares at the top and bottom, which contain the points P and Q, are connected to the leftmost rectangle, but this was an arbitrary choice. We could have chosen any of the rectangles to share an edge with the squares. To take into account several of the ways in which we could have unwrapped it, I will draw four squares on the top and four on the bottom. But it's important to remember that each set of four squares really represents the same one by one face of the box. Also note that due to the nature of how this box is unwrapped, each square on the top row is rotated 90 degrees clockwise from the square to its left. The same thing happens with the bottom squares, except they're rotated counterclockwise from left to right. The picture may be slightly misleading, since certain edges of the squares are overlapping, even though they represent two separate edges. For this reason, I've drawn them as dashed lines to remind us that they represent two unique edges. Now we have a more complete picture of the possible paths we could take to get from P to Q. Choose any one of the points labeled P, which, remember, all refer to the same point on the box, and connect it to one of the points labeled Q. This is a candidate for the shortest path. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the distances of each of these paths. The shortest path comes out to be 2 times square root of 2, and due to the symmetry of the box, there are two equally short paths with this length. So, how can we convince ourselves that there is some point on the box which requires a path longer than 2 square root of 2 to reach? I will draw a circle of radius 2 square root of 2, centered at P. Everything on and inside the circle represents a point that is closer than or equally distant to Q. So everything outside the circle should be further from Q, right? Well, almost. But there's something that we're not taking into account. Remember that the squares at the top actually represent a single face? Then to see what truly lies outside of the circle, we must rotate all the squares to have the same orientation and overlap them. Now it becomes apparent which points lie outside of the circle on all four representations of this face. It is the little kite-shaped section which I've highlighted. Then we know that all points in this section require a longer path to reach than did the point Q. This was a surprising realization when I first learned it. But how can we find the point which requires the very longest path from P? Maybe you've guessed that we can just increase the radius of the circle until the highlighted area is reduced to a single point. So let's do it. An important observation is that due to the symmetry of the box, we can be sure that the furthest point will lie along this diagonal of the square. Additionally, it will be the unique point at which all four circles intersect once the radius grows to the appropriate size. But, to simplify matters, we could just focus on these two arcs of the circle, since there is a unique radius such that the intersecting points of these two arcs will lie on the diagonal line. Let's now rotate the squares back to their original orientations, but continue drawing the diagonal that we're interested in. 
We only need to focus on two of the squares, since these correspond to the two arcs we're interested in. I will call these squares square 1 and square 2. Let the origin be at the bottom left corner of square 2. Then the diagonal in square 2 is y equals 1 minus x. And the point x, y in square 2 corresponds to the point minus y, x in square 1. Then we want to find the point along the diagonal in square 2 such that it and its corresponding point in square 1 are equidistant to p, which means that they lie on the same circle centered at p. With our choice of origin, p is located at minus 1, minus 2. So the distance from p to a point on square 2 is given by square root of x plus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared. Remember that x, y, and square 2 corresponds to minus y, x, and square 1. So the distance in square 1 is given by square root of minus y plus 1 squared plus x plus 2 squared. But we know the point lies on the line y equals 1 minus x. So we can replace the y's in both equations with 1 minus x. And since they must have the same distance to p, we can set both equations equal to each other. Solving this, we get x equals 3 fourths. And since y equals 1 minus x, then y must equal 1 fourth. We can find the distance from p now that we know the values of x and y. And this comes out to be square root of 30 over 4. And remember that the distance from p to q was 2 square root of 2. Writing both distances as a decimal number confirms that the point we just found requires a slightly longer path from p. This problem is from a 2013 UGA math tournament, and I've linked the original problem and its solution in the description.